Hi guys, in the last lecture what we covered is, we saw how to determine the circuit parameters of the equivalent circuit of a transformer. So for that, we studied two type of test. One was the open circuit test. In open circuit test, we determined core losses and we determine the shunt parameters of the transformer equivalent circuit R0 and X0. Open circuit test was conducted at rated voltage. So it was being conducted on the low voltage side because the rated voltage of the low voltage side is less. So it is easier to apply the rated voltage on the low voltage side. Then we studied about the short circuit test. In short circuit test, what we studied is it was being conducted at the rated current. Since high voltage side will have less rated current, so it was being conducted on the high voltage side with low voltage side being short circuited. It was used to determine full load copper loss and we determined the series parameters of the equivalent circuit which is R01 and X01. So this was what we covered in the last lecture. In this lecture we will try to understand what kind of losses occur in a transformer and what are the significance of different losses. So basically there are four type of losses that we consider in a transformer. First is called as copper loss. Copper loss is actually the loss that occurs in the winding of the transformer and since the winding is made of copper it is termed as copper loss. Next is called as iron loss or core loss. Due to alternating flux being set up in the core of the transformer there are some of the losses that are associated with the core like hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. Those two losses are called as core loss or the iron loss in a transformer. The third category is stray load loss and the last one is dielectric loss. In this lecture we will cover each of these losses in detail. What are these losses and where do they occur? So first let us start up with the copper loss. So basically copper loss is concerned with the winding resistance. Okay. This is the loss in winding resistance. Okay. So copper loss can be written as I1 square R1 plus I2 square R2. And when we studied winding resistance as I told you this is equal to I1 square into R01. R01 is the equivalent resistance referred to the primary winding. It is equal to I2 square into R02. So R02 is the equivalent resistance referred to the secondary winding. So we see that the copper loss is proportional to I square. So when we talk about copper loss at full load, we will call it as I full load square into R01 full load on the primary side or I full load square 2 into R02. I full load 2 means full load current on the secondary side. Now usually the transformer may not be working at the full load. Usually the distribution transformer, the transformers that are located at near our homes, they do not work on full load. Why? Because the load on the transformer varies. In the daytime, we may not switch on the tube lights. In the night time, we may switch on the tube lights. So the load is variable. Hence, they do not operate at full load, but at a variable load. So how is the loading defined? Loading is defined as I is equal to X times I full load. Okay. If someone is giving, let us say, X percent of full load, it implies I is equal to X by 100 
इंटू आई फुल लोड मीन्स दो लोडिंग इज डिफाइंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ करेंट टेन परसेंट ऑफ फुल लोड मीन्स द करेंट दैट इज फ्लोइंग इज इट टेन परसेंट ऑफ द फुल लोड करेंट दैट इज वट इज मेंट बाय लोडिंग नाउ आई नो कॉपर लॉस इज प्रपोर्शनल टू करेंट स्क्वायर सो वट आई विल से इज कॉपर लॉस इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वायर टाइम्स पी सी यू एफ एल और इन टर्म्स ऑफ परसेंटेज यू कैन से एक्स स्क्वायर बाय हंड्रेड स्क्वायर सो कॉपर लॉस इज प्रपोर्शनल टू लोडिंग स्क्वायर ओके लोडिंग जस्ट मीन्स वट परसेंटेज ऑफ द फुल लोड करेंट इज फ्लोइंग इन द ट्रांसफॉर्मर सो कॉपर लॉस विल कंटेन अ फैक्टर ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर समटाइम्स वील बी स्टडिंग पर यूनिट सिस्टम इन द केस ऑफ पावर सिस्टम बट नाउ इफ विट कंसिडर इन पर यूनिट सिस्टम समटाइम्स फुल लोड कॉपर लॉस विल बी गिवन इन टर्म्स ऑफ परसेंटेज परसेंटेज फुल लोड कॉपर लॉस इज इक्वल टू परसेंटेज रेजिस्टेंस ड्रॉ ओके दिस परसेंटेज सिस्टम और द पर यूनिट सिस्टम विल बी कवर्ड इन केस ऑफ पावर सिस्टम बट यू मस्ट बी वेल अवेयर ऑफ दैट पर यूनिट सिस्टम सो एज टू कंसिडर द लॉसेज एंड द पावर इन टर्म्स ऑफ पर यूनिट और द परसेंटेज सो परसेंटेज फुल लोड कॉपर लॉस इज सेम एज परसेंटेज रेजिस्टेंस ड्रॉप इज इट फाइन सो दिस इज वट इज अबाउट द कॉपर लॉसेज द वन मोस्ट बिगेस्ट कंफ्यूजन इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स इज they do not differentiate between the copper loss and the copper loss at full load so remember copper loss is nothing but it is a loss that occurs in the winding of the transformer at any value of current no need to specify the current whatever is the value of current the loss in the winding will be called as copper loss but copper loss at full load means the loss or the copper loss that occurs when the full load current is flowing in the winding or the rated current is flowing in the winding of the transformer so do remember to differentiate between these two the relation between these two is this x is in terms of percentage if x is in terms of fraction we will write pcu is equal to x square pcu fl if x is given in terms of ratio or the fraction okay so remember this difference between full load copper loss and copper loss at any other value of current the next type of loss is called as iron loss usually the core of the transformer we saw is made of silicon steel and steel is a form of iron only steel is made from iron so we can say that the core of the transformer is made of iron hence the losses that occur in the core are called as iron losses so these are also called as core losses or we can call them as iron losses as we saw the primary winding creates a flux in the core of the transformer and that flux has an alternating nature i told you phi is equal to phi m sin omega t so this flux is alternating in nature due to which there will be two type of losses in the core one will be hysteresis loss other will be eddy current loss these two type of loss occur in the core of the transformer due to the alternating flux set up by the primary winding of the transformer so let us first consider the hysteresis loss now what happens is all the magnetic materials that we used for the construction of transformer are ferromagnetic in nature now ferromagnetic material have a very special property that is called as spontaneous magnetization spontaneous magnetization means the magnetization that is present in the absence of magnetic field that is the magnetic dipoles in a ferromagnetic material are aligned even if there is no magnetic field present okay they will be aligned due to which they will have some magnetic flux density in the material even in the absence of magnetic field so they have some residual magnetic flux density this is the property of the ferromagnetic material so since we are applying an alternating flux okay 
the dipoles will be oriented in one direction in the positive half cycle and in the opposite direction in the negative half cycle. So we have to supply some energy to the dipoles to orient them or to reverse their orientation. Okay. Here if you see the magnetic field is zero. But due to remnant or the residual magnetic flux density, the dipoles will still be oriented in the same direction. So to reverse their orientation, we need to apply some energy and this energy will be supplied from the source connected to the primary winding. Such energy or such loss is called as hysteresis loss. It only occurs because of the residual flux density in the core of the transformer. So the dipoles will get oriented in one direction and will not lose their orientation upon removal of the magnetic field. So we have to reverse their orientation. We have to rotate them by 180 degree. So that will require some energy which is called as hysteresis loss. So ferromagnetic materials exhibit a hysteresis curve. Something like this. Now this middle line, what does it represent? It represents a freshly prepared sample. That is, when a newly prepared ferromagnetic material is taken, it will not have any residual flux density. So it will follow the curve, which is the middle line. But when you demagnetize it, then it will follow a different curve. So again, now at H is equal to zero, this is B versus H. At H is equal to zero, the magnetic field is non-zero or the magnetic flux density is non-zero. This is my residual flux density. And then again, if we increase, there is a different value of magnetic flux density. That is the property of the ferromagnetic material. And this curve is called as hysteresis curve. Okay. This is my hysteresis curve. It just denotes that while increasing the magnetic field and while decreasing the magnetic field, the path taken by the magnetic flux density is different. That is for same value of magnetic field, magnetic flux density can have two different value depending upon whether you are increasing H or if you are decreasing H. Like if you see here, for the same magnetic flux density, magnetic field H, we have two different value of B. These two different value depend upon whether you are decreasing the H or you are increasing the H on which curve you are traversing. Okay. The area of this curve indicates the hysteresis loss in one cycle. Okay. Area is equal to hysteresis loss per cycle. Okay. So total loss is equal to area into frequency, frequency of operation of the transformer. Okay, this is the time period. So frequency will be one upon time period. So total hysteresis loss is given by area under the hysteresis loop multiplied by frequency of operation of the transformer. This frequency will depend on this frequency of the source applied at the primary winding. Whatever is the source frequency will be the same frequency of the operation of the transformer. Now, how to estimate this hysteresis loss? This hysteresis loss is given by Steinmetz formula. Okay. It says that hysteresis loss is equal to eta. Eta is the hysteresis coefficient or Steinmetz coefficient. Bm raised to the power x into frequency into V. V is the volume of the core. So eta is called as Steinmetz constant. X is called as Steinmetz exponent. And this X depends on the type of material being used. Like X is equal to 1.6 for silicon steel or CRGO steel. X will be taken as 1.6. We here represent volume of core. So remember, hysteresis losses are directly proportional to the volume of core. If you change the dimension or the volume, then hysteresis loss will also change. 
and f is the frequency of operation so hysteresis loss are directly proportional to the frequency of operation now as we saw during the emf equation that bm is directly proportional to v by f so hysteresis loss is equal to eta v by f raised to the power x into f into volume which is eta v raised to the power x f raised to the power 1 minus x into volume okay this will be the expression for the hysteresis loss and now we can consider two cases if v by f is constant if v by f is constant i can consider this term as constant then hysteresis loss is directly proportional to frequency okay the higher the frequency more will be the hysteresis loss next is if v by f is not constant then hysteresis loss is proportional to voltage raised to the power x frequency raised to the power 1 minus x if you keep x is equal to 1.6 it will be voltage raised to the power 1.6 frequency raised to the power minus 0.6 this will be the expression of the hysteresis loss now if you keep voltage as constant then hysteresis loss will be proportional to frequency raised to the power minus 0.6 then on increasing the frequency hysteresis loss will decrease now try to summarize this if v by f is kept constant then hysteresis loss is proportional to frequency so by increasing the frequency hysteresis loss will increase but if you do not keep v by f as constant but instead keep voltage as constant then on increasing the frequency hysteresis loss will decrease or hysteresis loss will reduce so it depends what how hysteresis loss varies with frequency it depends if v by f is constant or if voltage is constant that depends on that next let us consider eddy current losses now since we have an alternating flux set up in the core of the transformer there will be some emf induced in the core if d phi by dt is non zero then emf will be induced in the core emf of the core will not be equal to zero now due to this emf being induced in the core there will be some current induced in the core which is called as eddy current why is it called as eddy current because as in a sea we have eddy eddy flowing in a circular loop similarly these eddy currents in the core of the transformer flow in the circular loops hence these are called as eddy current eddy in a sea flows in a circle similarly eddy currents in a core flow in the circular loops okay that is why when i was telling you about the laminations i was telling you we laminate the core to reduce the size of the loop so that eddy current losses reduce now this eddy current will be directly proportional to conductivity of the core the more the conductivity of the core more will be the eddy current and the resistance of the core will be inversely proportional to conductivity okay resistance is rho l by a or l by sigma a so resistance is inversely proportional to conductivity then eddy current losses which are equal to i e square r e will be directly proportional to sigma square into 1 by sigma which is equal to sigma so eddy current loss is directly proportional to the conductivity of the core if the core is taken as a conducting material then it will have more eddy current losses that is why what we were doing is we were adding silicon to the steel to increase the resistivity or to decrease the conductivity so that eddy current losses will increase but as i told you silicon cannot be added beyond 4% otherwise it will make the core of the transformer brittle and we need to give the transformer core a shape for its operation now eddy current losses are given by some constant ke into bm square bm is the maximum value of magnetic flux density in the core into frequency square into t square 
T is the thickness of the lamination used to design the core. Okay. When we were laminating the core, the core will lamination will have some thickness T. That is why while doing lamination, I effectively reduce the thickness of the core. Earlier the core was this much thick, but after lamination, the thickness is only reduced. So my eddy current losses will also reduce. Okay. So remember this dependency on thickness also. It is proportional to the thickness square. So thinner the laminations, less will be the eddy current loss. But if we make the laminations too thin, then it will be very much difficult to rivet the laminations together and keep the core together. Okay. So it may be possible that the core may disintegrate or the individual laminations may come apart if the laminations are too thin. So we cannot reduce the lamination thickness arbitrarily. Otherwise, the core strength will also reduce. So let us consider the again the two same cases. First is V by F is constant. Then BM will also be constant because BM is proportional to V by F. Then eddy current losses will be proportional to frequency square. Okay. But if voltage is constant, then eddy current loss is proportional to BM square into F square. Now BM square is proportional to V by F square into F square. So eddy current loss will be proportional to V square, which is constant. So eddy current loss is constant if voltage is kept constant and V by F is not constant. Okay. So eddy current loss will not vary with frequency if you keep the voltage applied as constant. So this is the dependency of the eddy current loss on the voltage and frequency. Now let us see how we can separate the eddy current loss and the hysteresis loss from the iron loss. See, we were obtaining iron loss from the open circuit test, but we were not knowing the individual components that is the hysteresis loss and the eddy current loss. The only thing we knew was the iron loss. So what to do is conduct an experiment in which V by F is kept constant. We are varying the frequency and voltage such that their ratio remains constant. Voltage is not constant and neither is frequency, but their ratio is constant. Then we saw if V by F is constant, hysteresis loss is proportional to frequency and eddy current loss is proportional to frequency square. So we can say wi is equal to wh plus we is equal to kh into f plus ke into f square. Okay. So if you take wi by f, then it will be kh plus ke into f. Now if you plot the graph between wi by f versus frequency, it will be a straight line. Okay. The slope of the straight line would be Ke and the intercept would be Kh. So that is how we can determine Kh and Ke while plotting Wi by F versus F. And once we have Kh and Ke, we can determine hysteresis loss, which is equal to Kh into F and eddy current loss, which is equal to Ke into F square. The only thing that we need is Kh and Ke that can be obtained from the graph by the slope and the intercept. Okay. So this is about the iron losses and how we can separate them into its component. The next loss that we consider is called as stray load loss. So first of all, let us understand the meaning of the term stray load loss. Why is it called as stray? Because this occurs in the iron parts of the transformer, which are not linked to the core or the winding. See, the transformer will have some iron structure. It is not only core plus winding, but it will have some outer shield. It will have a base. It will have a stand. All those things will be made of iron. So these losses occur in those iron parts of the transformer. Hence, they do not occur at a definite place. Like I knew that the copper losses would be occurring in winding. I knew that the core loss will be occurring in the core, but these stray load losses do not have any fixed location. Hence, these are called as stray. 
नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दैट दे डिपेंड ऑन द लोड करेंट हैंस द टर्म लोड सो दीज आर दी वेरिएबल लॉसेज बिकॉज दीज डिपेंड ऑन द लोड करेंट बट द कोर लॉस इज डिपेंडेड ऑन द वोल्टेज एंड फ्रिक्वेंसी एंड नॉट ऑन द लोड करेंट हैंस दे कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज द कॉन्स्टेंट लॉस कॉपर लॉस ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन द लोड करेंट सो इट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरिएबल लॉस सो कॉपर लॉस एंड द स्ट्रे लोड लॉस आर कंसिडर्ड एज वेरिएबल लॉस बिकॉज दे डिपेंड ऑन द लोड करेंट Now, how does it depend on the load current? Due to the load current, let us say I two, a leakage flux is developed phi L two. This leakage flux will link the iron parts as well as secondary winding. Due to which an EMF will be induced. Due to which, eddy current will also be induced, which will lead to losses. okay that is how stray load losses occur the secondary current or the primary load current will generate some leakage flux this leakage flux will link two things one is the iron parts of the transformer other is the winding conductor and they will induce an emf in those conductors or the iron parts due to which there will be some losses which are called as stray load losses now to reduce the losses in the conductor what we do is we take the stranded conductor instead of the solid conductor the cross sectional area of the solid conductor is something like this but in case of stranded conductor this entire conductor is divided into small conductors so that we can reduce the eddy current losses consider this similar to the lamination of the core to reduce the eddy current losses in the core what we did we laminated it into thin sheets similarly here we divide as entire solid conductor into thinner conductors to reduce the eddy current losses okay so even the stray load loss has two components one is the losses that are occurring in the iron parts that will be called as iron stray load loss one is occurring in the conductors that will be called as copper stray load loss practically these are 0.5% of the output power okay so that is why stray load losses will be mostly neglected because they are very less in magnitude but now i hope you understand their cause the cause is the leakage flux which is developed due to the load current and they occur in two locations one is the iron parts of the transformer other is the winding conductors this can be reduced by making the winding conductor as the stranded conductors but you cannot reduce the losses that are occurring in the iron parts of the transformer the last type of loss is the dielectric loss dielectric loss occurs in insulators present in the transformer now insulators can be due to two reasons one is the winding insulation when i was telling you about interleaving of the winding we were keeping an insulation between the core and the winding and between the high voltage and the low voltage winding the other is due to the oil in the transformer oil also acts as an insulator so it will also have some dielectric loss now what is the main reason by behind the dielectric loss is that no insulator is perfect none of the insulator can guarantee that there will be zero current through it always through an insulator the resistivity is very high the resistance is very high but still there is a leakage current through the insulator that leakage current may be in the order of milli ampere or micro ampere the current is very less but still it has some magnitude due to this current there will be some losses in the core of the transformer which are called as dielectric losses usually the core of the transformer is a magnetic material it is not a conducting material still it will incur some losses which are called as dielectric losses these dielectric losses are almost 0.25% of the output power okay that is why they are neglected now this these losses depend on the voltage applied instead of the current carried by the load so these are also taken as constant losses remember the only difference between the constant and the variable loss constant losses are those which do not vary with the load current and variable losses are those that depend on the load current this is the only difference it is not that constant losses cannot vary they can vary by changing the applied voltage to the transformer 
बट वेरिएबल लॉसेज डिपेंड ऑन द लोड करेक्टेड टू द ट्रांसफॉर्मर और द करेंट ड्रॉन बाय द लोड दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वेरिएबल एंड द कॉन्स्टेंट लॉसेज वी विल अगेन एनकाउंटर दिस डायलैक्ट्रिक लॉस वेन वी विल बी कंसिडरिंग द यू जी केबल्स इन केस ऑफ पावर सिस्टम देर वी विल ड्राइव द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द डायलैक्ट्रिक लॉस एंड इट विल बी मोर क्लियर बट फॉर नाउ जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दीज लॉसेज ऑकर ड्यू टू फाइनाइट कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ द इंसुलेटर्स अदरवाइज आइडियली द कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ द इंसुलेटर शुड बी जीरो देर शुड बी नो करेंट थ्रू एनी इंसुलेशन बट देर इज अ करेंट थ्रू द इंसुलेशन विच इज लीकेज करेंट एंड इट इज फाइनाइट सो लेट एस समराइज वट वी सॉ वी सॉ फोर टाइप ऑफ लॉसेज फर्स्ट वन वॉज कॉपर लॉस विच वी रोट एज आई वन स्क्वायर इंटू आर जीरो वन और आई टू स्क्वायर इंटू आर जीरो टू देन वी सॉ कोर लॉस विच हैड हिस्ट्रेस इज लॉस विच वॉज ईटा बी एम रेज टू दावर एक्स फ्रीक्वेंसी इंटू वी एक्स वॉज वन पॉइंट सिक्स फॉर सिलिकॉन स्टील देन वी सॉ एडी करेंट लॉस विच वॉज के ई बी एम स्क्वायर एफ स्क्वायर इंटू टी स्क्वायर टी इज द थिकनेस ऑफ लेमिनेशन एंड देन वी सॉ स्ट्रे लोड लॉस विच ऑकर्स इन द आयरन पार्ट्स एंड द कंडक्टर्स ऑफ द वाइंडिंग एंड लास्ट वी सॉ डायलैक्ट्रिक लॉस विच ऑकर्स इन द इंसुलेशन दैट इज द वाइंडिंग इंसुलेशन और ऑयल प्रेजेंट इन द ट्रांसफॉर्मर इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वील सी हाउ टू डिटरमाइन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मर हाउ टू डिटरमाइन which transformer is better and which is worse that we'll see in the next lecture